Hello, everyone, and welcome to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, and nails of your life, while also both looking and feeling your best. In today's lesson, we're going to talk all about serums. What do you need to know about serums? What is a serum? What does it achieve? And how can you integrate it within your skincare routine? Well, first of all, what is a serum? A serum is typically composed of humectants like hyaluronic acid. They're very hydrating for the skin. And a nuance to know about hyaluronic acid is that there's different sizes of this hyaluronic acid molecule. And the size needs to be the right size so that it can actually do its thing on the skin. So that's why sometimes when people try and make a DIY hyaluronic acid serum at home, they end up buying a product where the molecular size is actually just a little too big. So there is some sophistication that goes into actually making a serum. So it's not just about finding a serum that has HAs or things like vitamin C, vitamin E, and sometimes even different antioxidants, peptides, and even mushroom extracts, which is pretty cool. So serums work to hydrate the skin. They're really great when you feel like your skin just needs a little extra oomph in the hydration department. By the way, if you're dealing with some skin dryness, I warmly encourage you to actually bump up your exfoliation routine. And the reason why is the top layer of our skin is called the stratum corneum. And it's like stacked up little cornflakes. And when dirt, debris, pollution, heavy metals, and even mold from the air rest and get trapped in the stratum corneum, it, it can actually result in skin irritation. And you're going to feel that as skin dryness. So it's the stratum corneum. It's the top layer of the skin that's making your skin kind of feel dry. So you actually do want to exfoliate to feel like your skin is more glassy, smooth, and hydrated. So I didn't want to skip over the importance of exfoliation. The other things that are often in hyaluronic acid are things like vitamin C. What does vitamin C do for the skin? Well, it's shown to help to brighten the skin. So if you're dealing with pigmentation like sunspots, age spots, or melasma, this can be really helpful. And also vitamin C is a potent antioxidant. Sunscreens are just that. Sunblock is a misnomer. There's really no such thing as a sunblock because there's still going to be rays, whether that's from the sun or from your blue light, that's going to slip through your sunscreen. What these vitamin C and other antioxidants do in your moisturizers or in your serum do is they actually gobble up the free radicals that get formed from exposure to things like ultraviolet radiation from the glorious sunshine or from blue light. But we also get these different types of rays, which is actually heat. So if you're outside and it's really hot, yes, even heat can be harmful to the skin, but then you're probably thinking, well, what about saunaing? Well, this is a shorter duration of heat and the heat from the sauna is stimulating something called hormesis, which is then telling your body to basically repair itself. So saunaing and heat, I do like that. However, if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation or melasma, you actually might want to avoid the heat. But if you still want a sauna, then what you can do is the Sunlightened Sauna the Sunlight and Company makes, I think, the best saunas in the world, and they have a solo sauna. This is actually the one that I have. And I like this because my head and neck is actually exposed from the sauna. So it's outside of the sauna. It's kind of like this like dome that you slide in. It's very different than those saunas that you zip up to your neck. I find that the heat with those, it's not really distributed evenly. And so that's the Sunlight and Solo sauna. So if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation concerns, you still want the benefits of saunaing, then the solo sauna is helpful for you. And you can actually get that on my biohacking page and just simply reach out to the company, let them know what your concerns are, what your budget is, what it's like in your home. Do you need to have an electrician install a particular outlet or are you renting and do you want to just be able to plug and play? There's a number of different options on the market. Sunlight is my favorite. So these compounds that are antioxidants are really important. So really good moisturizers and serums are going to have these. And what's also important to consider is, is that product 
kept stable. What is the final outcome and testing on the final formulation? It's not just about buying a serum that has, you know, those hero ingredients that you've heard me talk about, like hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, other antioxidants, other peptides. We really care. Is that vitamin C actually kept stable? Did you know that when you take an apple out of the refrigerator or from your counter and you cut it in half, the apple, the pulp of the apple, the white part, when exposed to air will oxidize. And this actually can happen to vitamin C as well in serums if it's not kept stable. So in a really good vitamin C serum, there are going to be some different agents in that serum product to actually make sure that that vitamin C isn't going rancid. If you are using a serum right now that's sort of like hippy dippy made in someone's kitchen and sold, uh, you're probably seeing lots of advertising for this. I see this a lot with lower quality products. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making your own products for your body, but when it comes to mature skin needs and really desiring to reduce pigmentation and protect the skin and protect the collagen. You do want to make the switch to more medical grade or practitioner grade products, which is what I offer on my skin shop. So there's a science that goes into making sure that that vitamin C is kept stable so it doesn't oxidize and actually become a free radical on your skin because I don't want you to be paying for something and it's actually harming your skin and also wasting your time and money. The other thing that's really interesting that can be in antioxidant serums for the skin are things like mushroom extracts. And actually in the super serum, that one has reishi mushroom extract. And there's been, you know, decades of research on the potency of reishi mushroom for helping the body primarily with reducing stress. A lot of mushrooms are considered adaptogens. They help the body manage stress and they support the adrenals, but they can also help to support stress that the skin experiences through heat, like I mentioned, or UV and sun damage from the light, from the sunshine and also from our blue light. What else do you need to know about serums? Well, first of all, how do you use it? Where does it get applied in your skincare routine? You want to be cleansing the skin. And if it's in the AM, you can you know wash your face in the bath or the shower. Just make sure you rinse off your cleanser really well. Then you'll go to your eye cream. Put that eye cream around the eyes. Move that lymph. I teach you how to do lymphatic drainage, facial gua sha, and also muscle and fascia release in my seasonal skin tutorials. So if you haven't yet joined one of my tutorials, I warmly invite you to join now. I do have one happening at this very moment. We just got started over at the school of radiance.com. After your eye cream, you're going to be applying your antioxidant serum. This is typically a daytime serum. I'm going to talk about dermal rolling serums because those are a little bit different, but for a daytime antioxidant serum, you wash your face, apply your eye cream, apply your serum, and then maybe you'll apply your neck cream, your moisturizer, your sunscreen, and then your makeup. I know that that can sound like a lot of steps. Like how long is that really going to take? My skincare routine honestly takes me moments. It takes me about three minutes max. It's going to take a little bit longer if I'm doing a scrub, which I'll sometimes do either in the AM or the PM. So today I did my scrub and that's why my skin is just extra glassy. I have an event this afternoon to get to and I wanted my skin to shine a little bit more. So I did do that. I washed my face. I did the scrub, rinsed it off, eye cream, serum, neck cream, moisturizer, sunscreen, and makeup. And if you're curious about, you know, how to actually apply your products as well, like how much you need to use, I do have write-ups on my skin shop for every product that's on there with directions for use and my tips and tricks. And they can actually see me do it in my tutorials as well. I am a huge fan of utilizing antioxidant serums, especially when it's more sunny outside, because we do want this extra added protection to gobble up those free radicals that can get formed. And from the different rays from the sunshine or blue light that slip through your sunscreen, even if it's like a 20% zinc sunscreen, it's not a block, it's a screen, remember. So having different agents like this 
in your antioxidant serum is really important. So serums are going to give you added protection. They're also going to give you added hydration. Now we do want to talk about the nuances with serums here. Say, for example, you're acne prone. You're going to want to be using a serum that's a little bit more designed for acne care. And I have a number of different acne serums on my skin shop as well. If you're wanting to focus on skin redness, I do have a particular one. It's called the Pro Health Serum. That one's great for helping to reduce redness and inflammation. It's helping to heal the skin. It's actually kind of a cool name. The Super Serum keeps the skin feeling a little bit kind of like tight. And my more mature clients really like the serum because it gives that tightness feel and also is going to have the vitamin C, vitamin E, reishi mushroom extract, and other things as well. If you're looking for one that's really going to hydrate the skin, that's going to be the C and E peptide on my skin shop. And it comes in three bottles with one dropper. And actually the vitamin C crystals are kept separate from the solution. So you're always... Uh, after 15 mils of the serum, you simply go to the next container, take that white cap, push down on it, and it's going to release those vitamin C crystals into the solution so it's fresh, which is actually kind of a cool and innovative idea. The C and E peptide serum, that one I wouldn't necessarily go for if you're acne prone because there is some information that suggests that having a lot of vitamin E in your skincare can actually create a little bit more acne. So the CNA peptide and the super serum are excellent serums for just overall antioxidant protection and hydration. Now, if you're more on the mature skin spectrum, you've really dry skin, you got those fine lines and wrinkles, then the serum, the youth serum, the one that has the word youth in front of it and the youth eye complex and the youth moisturizer, those are gonna be geared for skin that I would say is a little bit more like 50 and up where there's maybe some deeper fine lines, wrinkles, and more skin dryness as well. So that's in a nutshell how you use your serum. There's also one other product I wanna mention. This is the Bright and Clear Solution. This I kind of have on my skin shop with the word toner. It's not actually a toner, it has lactic acid in it and other brightening agents. Lactic acid hydrates the skin. I also did a full body lactic acid peel uh, right as I was getting ready today. And I actually teach you about different peels and how to skin cycle your retinols and your serums alongside your routine. I have a specific lesson on that in my tutorial. So a really high level uh, lesson on teaching you, you know, what night you're going to do this, what night you're going to do that, what night you're going to do that. And we're just keeping this to serums here for the AM serum. So the bright and clear solution, just put, um, you know, one or two squirts of it in the palm of your hand and apply it to the face, neck, and chest. And just a reminder, whatever you're doing to the face, I warmly encourage you to do to the neck, the sides of the neck, and the entire chest area, and even get some of that product on the inner arms and also on the hands. And when it comes to other serums, like dermal rolling serums, there's two serums in particular that I recommend alongside dermal rolling. And this is a copper peptide and also a vitamin C. Now, something that's important for you to know with dermal rolling, again, that's something I teach in tutorials, exactly how to do it, how to apply your products afterwards, how to clean it, the technique, all of that, how many times a week, that's all covered in there. But the copper peptide and the, the soluble C serum, I really want you to reserve those serums for your nighttime dermal rolling. So you'll wash your face, do your rolling, and then apply that copper peptide and soluble C. Why not use those serums during the daytime? They don't have the same slip or glide or hydration capacity as the other daytime antioxidant serums that I mentioned. Now, depending when you're listening to this episode, some of my recommendations may have changed. So for my updated recommendations, you're going to want to book that one-on-one -on -one as soon as possible. I don't know how long I'm going to be offering them and also join my tutorials for that deep dive overview more on things like serums. I hope that you got a lot out of today's episode here on the School of Radiance podcast. I'm sure that now you have a little bit more clarity. 
There is a bonus tip I want to mention. If you are dealing with hyperpigmentation or melasma and in the spring, summer, it kind of rears its ugly head a little bit, or if it's really related to hormones, obviously get your health on point, reduce oxidative stress, but there are actually some lightening products that I also have on my skin shop. And that's actually the lightening lotion, which contains something called hydro quinone. And you would essentially use this lotion and then a put, put your moisturizer on over top. So you're kind of using it like a serum. It's a little thicker, but it's a 2% hydroquinone. And this product actually helps to break down the deposits of melanin in the skin to help to brighten the skin. And how you use it is you basically use it pretty much every day. If your skin's a little sensitive, then lean into your basic routine of cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, and scrub. But when you use that product and you're done the bottle, then you need to take a six month break. This isn't a product like a hydroquinone type of serum or product to be used ongoing. You need to cycle this. It's really important. I did just want to emphasize that because if, if hyperpigmentation and melasma are some of the things that you're dealing with, then that could be really helpful for you. But don't put the cart before the horse. Don't invest in a really good antioxidant serum or a lightening product or a peel or a retinol without having your basics dialed in because you really wanna have your skin barrier stabilized and you wanna be caring for your skin in the way that it really does wanna be cared for, which is cleansing in the AM and PM with the double cleanse in the PM moisturizing, sun protection, and then exfoliating a couple of times a week. Again, at the first sign of a breakout, the skin's feeling a little bit dry. That's when you can dive into your scrub. I do have one last bonus thing to offer here, and that's actually the complexion renewal pads for specifically those with pigmentation or also maybe even acne. And I would say just in general, it just makes the skin look a little bit glassy and dewy and smooth because of the alpha hydroxy acid in it. There's a little bit of salicylic acid. There's a little bit of glycolic acid. And what these acids do is they help to promote cellular turnover. So you could kind of like use that after your cleansing, maybe your scrub, you could do the complexion pads and then do your eye cream, serum, moisturizer, and sunscreen. Again, I know that sounds like a lot, but once you get the hang of it, it's really only going to take you a few moments and it's not going to be this, you know, 365 routine, but this is really what a routine looks like that's going to be more likely to address the needs of mature skin, protect that collagen, prevent UV damage, prevent you know damage from pollution even. If you live in a city where there's a lot of pollution, then actually using an antioxidant serum or moisturizer with antioxidants and peptides are really helpful. Just be careful of the peptide buzzword. Peptides have been used in medical grade, practitioner grade skincare since I started the industry in 2011. So peptides and skincare really isn't actually revolutionary. And I just want you to be aware of that because I do see this in a lot of really new brands that are really expensive. And then I go to use them and I have to use a lot of the product. It doesn't slip very well. It doesn't wear very well. And I just don't think that that formulation is worth the price point. On my skin shop, you can search from about 200 different products from skincare, makeup, hair care, hair growth. Yes, I did a little bit of hair growth uh, serum after washing my hair today on my little edges. And uh, again, I teach that in tutorials as well. And I look forward to having you back here on the School of Radiance podcast. Reach out if you have any questions. You can reach out to me directly at info at theschoolofradiance.com. Happy to answer your questions and point you in the right direction of how to get started. Because really, it's, it's really key to just make sure that you have a routine that's customized for you. Also in the description of this episode, there's an opportunity to, you know, book a quick meet and greet with me and I'll give you some laser focus guidance on, you know, what steps I think are really going to help you on your skin and rejuvenation journey. And until next time, be well, have a fantastic day. And remember my favorite F words. My favorite efforts. Yes, I know that sounds a little bit uncouth to say a word, but hear me out for a moment. Faith, family, fun, freedom, fitness, and finances. 
the six efforts that I live by that are really important. So take that into your day and just make sure that you're not missing out on those things, the body, mind, spirit, energy stuff, reducing oxidative stress, just do the best you can. And if you're not interested in really just doing the best you can and you want to take that deeper dive and really learn what I do behind the scenes to cultivate more radiance, to communicate and show up in a very specific way, way that's beyond just learning how to apply your products and tutorials, but really how to show up and present as your best version. And quite honestly, get what you want out of life and not that wanting energy so much, but what you desire to have more of in regards to those six efforts. And I'll teach you how to get there now with some pretty sophisticated behind the scenes things that I just don't share publicly because I don't really want the general population to really kind of know what I'm doing behind the scenes. All right. Love you all so much. Have a beautiful, high vibrating day. And I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.